Not only not a good day for the House of Commons, it's not a good day for the UK, it's not a good day for humanity. To see this chaos in the House of Commons, um, it's really, really uh, British politics at its lowest. This is disgraceful and shameful that MPs are uh, debating should they call for an immediate ceasefire after 100,000 Palestinians killed, maimed, injured, after 70% of their houses gone, after all of their health sector bombarded, all their education sector annihilated, and then the ICJ comes and says Israel is now officially on trial for genocide because the, the case against Israel for genocide is plausible. And then Westminster is still, is still debating and politicking. MPs tonight have, have shown everybody they are defending and protecting their careers as opposed to defending and protecting children, our humanity, but in the truth, UK responsibility under international law. What, what difference would it have made? had MPs agreed but and called for an immediate ceasefire. Israel wouldn't have big listened. Difference. Hamas wouldn't have listened. But if you think for a second that Israel would have been able to commit all these atrocities over a period of 75 years without the tacit support of countries like the UK and the US, think again. Israel was created by the UK. It was a UK declaration that has uh, enabled Israel to do the so, the so. And since then, the US and the UK and the rest of the West has picked up the support. You've seen what the US did yesterday in the Security Council opposing an immediate ceasefire using the veto power for the zillion times to stop to end the, ge the genocide, and therefore this is enabling genocide. So no, the outside world, Britain does provide... Do you, th you think the Israeli Britain, government would, would stop? Brit 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 the Israeli government will only stop when Britain takes itself seriously as an actor in the international arena. What is happening is not only affecting the Palestinian people. What is happening is going to affect all of us. This is going to spiral, to spiral regionally and globally. And I'm saying it with conviction. And therefore, if the UK sits on its hands right now, as we have seen today, the chaos in the parliament, if politicians continue to argue and to debate if Israel violated international law, when the government presented a motion just to politique and to poke Labour and SNP. And in the motion, they condemn Palestinians, condemn Palestinians, condemn Palestinians. And they fail even to mention after 136 days, the atrocities, the genocide that is committed. But then you know these politicians are not serious. But the they block. are not representing the real people. I just came, came back from Westminster Square. I saw the thousands of British people. I saw your citizens. Those are the actual representatives who now but, believe that this is about our humanity, not just about politics. But, but the bloc, sure on these Western governments being able to say something more clear about the ceasefire they want is also the fact that Hamas has made it clear that it is not interested in a ceasefire. It still holds those hostages. It still intends to keep attacking Israel. But this is... as, as long as it maintains that position, a ceasefire is only one-sided, isn't it? And that's, therefore, that's, it won't be That's called. not accurate whatsoever. A ceasefire is a ceasefire. There are no two sides to this. There but do you think no it's possible that Hamas would agree there, to a ceasefire? It, according to the Qataris and the Egyptians and the Americans, Hamas has agreed. And there is a, a deal on the table of Netanyahu and Israel for the last so many weeks that hostages will be exchanged, that a temporary ceasefire will hold for 45 days, then will be followed. And in the meantime, by political discussions, to go to a permanent a uh, uh, ceasefire where we discuss the root cause of all this. It's Netanyahu who does not want to stop this war because he knows the moment he stops this war, he is done. He's gone. And therefore, this is an interest of one person, and this one person is dragging all of us into this unprecedented dent in our humanity and a danger, an existential, uh, existential danger on our international order and on the people who will commit more atrocities. I mean, the new rules of war, normalizing the mass murder of children. This is very serious. This is very serious. And Western governments like the UK is inconsistent. Allow me here. I mean, one day they say they want to stop the fighting immediately, including Prime Minister Rishi Sonak, the Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, and everybody. And next day, they abstain in the Security Council. One day they say we want to focus on the humanitarian aspect, and then they, they, they defund UNRWA, which is the biggest agency that is supporting Palestinian humanitarian side. One day they say that we want to sanction settlers and the illegal settlers, and the next day they push for a motion, for a, for a, not a motion, for a law in the UK Parliament, now making its way in the final stages to actually shield any accountability for Israeli Ambassador. settlers and settlements. This, there is no, there is no policy in the US we, that Netanyahu would pick and would listen. And the moment the UK stops sending weapons to Netanyahu, he'll start listening. Thank you very much indeed for coming in.